Banned from the show for life. Only kidding, of course. So, what are we going to do tonight? Lots of stuff. Let's first think about this as a who's who at the Railroad Hobby Show. We have 337 exhibitors to date. We'll probably be up to our normal 400 by the time we're done. This is very typical of this time of the year. And if you think about highlighting all of them, for even a minute at a time, we're talking about a show that'll last for almost six hours. So what we've done is highlight 35 folks that have advertised in our booklet and we're gonna highlight them. And we should take even with that about three hours. So we're, we're gonna be on the air for about the next three hours straight. So we're gonna do this by live interviews. I've got a couple of live interviews. Uh, people will be joining us right up here on stage. We've got a Zoom interview and we've got a lot of video clips. And the rest we're just going to be talking about, folks. I've got some good stories. We're going to visit the Amherst Railway Society Railroad Hobby Show website. We're going to talk about how to get to us, how to find accommodations in the area. We're going to need all kinds of things. So we're going to visit the Railroad Hobby Show, triple dub railroadhobbyshow.com. Uh, I think three times in the course of the evening so we could talk about clinics, we could talk about how to find rooms and how to get to the show, uh, that kind of thing. Okay, but before I go any further, time out. I used to be a high school basketball ref. Time out. I need to thank the folks at Virtual Rail Fan for helping us with this production. This would never happen without them. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. Okay, so some of you in the audience have been asking, what has the Railroad Hobby Show been, or Amherst Railway Society, sorry, been doing lately? Not counting the Railroad Hobby Show, which we didn't have. We had a virtual show instead. So we had a virtual show in January and, and I don't know whose idea it was to go live for the whole time the show was on, uh, usually on the air. So we were live on a virtual show for eight hours on Saturday and seven hours on Sunday. I could not speak until Wednesday. But it was my idea. So, but I'm glad we did it because we, you know, we take a lot of uh, uh, monies from this show, and that's what gets us going with our grant program and everything else that we do. And with the help of all of you that join us in the virtual uh, hobby show, it really made a difference, and it got us through up to where we are right now. And boy, are we ready for the show? Okay. So, what else did we do? We actually tried another mid-season show in June, just an update to let you know what was going on, what we're doing, all that kind of stuff. But we've done a lot of other things as well. We have become great friends with the people at Union Station in Springfield, Massachusetts. Not only did we do their Christmas tree two years ago, we couldn't show it to anybody. We just had a lighting ceremony this past uh, I think it was like two weeks ago, I met the mayor, I met the house representative, uh, I met the folks at, uh, at Union Station, uh, Nicole, Amanda, Mike, they, they are just thrilled. We built a Christmas, well, they had the Christmas tree, but we suspended a ring of track about a third of the way up the Christmas tree, so it looks like it's just hanging in midair. So it was very cool when we lit the tree this year. Everybody was all kinds of cool, appreciative and that kind of thing, uh, which was nice. The other thing we did at uh, uh, Union Station was we put a camera, uh, thanks again to Virtual Rail Fan. And I think they're going to jump to that camera just for a few minutes, uh, a few seconds. But we're going to come back to that later. But we've got a pan, tilt and zoom camera there. The first, I think the first camera for Virtual Rail Fan in Massachusetts. First time I saw it. I said, whose model railroad is that? I mean, the camera is just at the perfect angle, the perfect size scale. So I thought I was looking at an HO scale layout, but it was really cool when it started moving around and you could hear it. And the sound quality is wow, typical of their cameras. So it looks really cool. And we'll head back to that to see if there's any kind of action. So other things we've done, we've donated, uh, or we had donated to us a three rail layout, which is now downstairs in what we call our education center, the lower level of the Amherst Railway Society headquarters. And we had to take it apart in sections all the way up from uh, east of Haverhill, Mass, in a town called Georgetown. I didn't even know there was a Georgetown, Mass 
uh, being from Connecticut. But anyways, we took three or four trips up there, brought it all down in sections, got it back together about two weeks later, and it runs and it's looking good. And we're using it for scenery clinics on how to repair the scenery, all that kind of stuff. Um, other things, we built a layout for uh, Han Hancock Shaker Village way out in uh, Western Massachusetts. Uh, the old Shaker Village, now a nonprofit. They have a Christmas uh, uh, program going on as we speak uh, for the next couple of weeks. So we built them a little HO scale uh, for my six railroad uh, uh, and, and the actual starter layout uh, donated by Bachman who happens to be here tonight. So thank you, Ray, for that. And, and, uh, uh, and it's been running ever since. So what we did was we scenic this railroad uh, and at the last minute after we had all the scenery on it, all I did was spray it. Uh, I, I had I had it rain with diluted white glue and we sprinkled snow all over the whole thing, even the tracks. And then I went around and, you know, bright boyed the tracks off again. And that little railroad, that little engine uh, running around the tracks uh, uh, looks really cool in all the snow. So it looks good. So we came up with something for them in three weeks. They called me about three weeks before. And, we, and we, we negotiated a little bit and said, ooh, what's the timing on this? And she goes, can you have it in three weeks? And we did, because we had all of the parts here. Plus, thanks to Ray, we were able to uh, get that done. We also sold collections. We have, unfortunately, many people pass away over the years. And we get collections about, honestly, about every month. And, and we save them up for our annual sales. And depending on if you remember or not, we will sell the collections to the estates of the families. Uh, and I'm very happy to say that we sold over $25,000 worth of materials to give back to the uh, wives, families of those folks that have passed away. So I'm, I feel really good about that. And that'll continue. That's what we've done forever. We also, along those lines, will clean a railroad out of the basement at no charge. We'll just take it out, clean up, sweep up, so it looks like We've never been there. So we've done that as well. That's just part of things that we do. Uh, we just got back from the Palmer tree lighting ceremony about a mile from here. So I froze my buns off uh, for about three hours, but it was well worth it. There were two, 300 people there. They had a reading of the Polar Express. They had great music. The people from the town were there. I met a couple councilmen. It was just a great experience. So we love getting involved with towns and, and our neighbors. And our own Amherst Beltlines, our SIG group, special interest group, has actually been to a few shows already just returning from the Hub Show. So that um, group is our major ambassador uh, group for uh, what we do. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So in summary, what have we done this past year? A lot, and we're not done yet. We're talking a lot of other things. I'll save that for our president who's coming up in a few minutes. So we've got a lot going on. So where are we headed now? Let me show you a little bit about how this show this evening is going to work. In this case, we're going to a video for scaletrains.com um, uh, run by Shane uh, and company, but Drayden is gonna talk about a couple of things there. And coming out of the video, Guys, we'll go and we're going to go back and I'm going to show you where Scale Trains is located um, in, in this case, in the Better Living Center. So we'll talk about the four buildings when we get back this first time through. But let's go to the video that lasts for just over five minutes. Let's go see what's going on at scaletrains.com. Take it away. Hey everybody, it's Drayton from Scale Trains and I'm coming to you from our warehouse and headquarters in Benton, Tennessee. And as you can see behind me is the latest run of Rivet Counter SD40-2s. There's five road names in this run. One is an all new road name in the Rivet Counter line and it happens to be our very first Mexican road name, which is pretty exciting. And out of the road names that we've offered before previously, we're offering four new road numbers so you can build and expand your fleet. We have Santa Fe, CSX, Milwaukee Road, NDM, and Norfolk Southern. Now, a couple of our road names, namely Santa Fe and CSX, either have no inventory right now, 
or have very limited inventory. Pre-order reservations expire on December 17th. We've given folks a little bit more padding to pay for their pre-orders with all the hustle and bustle of the holidays. But on the 17th, make sure you're subscribed to our Scale Trains newsletter. You can do so at scaletrains.com to receive notice when more become available. In addition to the SD40-2s, our latest run of 4180 air slide covered hoppers are also in stock. And we've got some really exciting, colorful new road names. My personal favorite in this run is the Champion Spark Plug paint scheme and road name. Really cool design on that one. And also for you modern guys who are like, man, I like these cars, but they don't really fit my era. We're offering a modernized GACX blue car. That way you can run, uh, run it as a buffer car on your long unit crude oil or ethanol trains. Also, right around the time that this video goes out, mid-December, we're gonna have the latest run, or actually it's our first run of in-scale rivet counter multimax cars. The same popular road names that you guys have seen in HO scale. Um, for you class one guys, we got BNSF, CSX, Union Pacific, Norfolk Southern, you name it, the cars, we've got them, and they're really, really, really detailed cars. Also in mid-December is expected to be the SD45s. I'm really excited about this run because it includes my favorite fallen flag, Southern Railway, some other great road names like Erie Lackawanna with the low profile fans, the Bicentennial unit, some road names you're definitely gonna wanna check out. Um, also, our latest run of 4785s are coming in. Those are great for any modelers in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Lots more color, you know, that's kind of the theme this year. Fall is just coming to a close and winter is coming, but adding some color any time of the year to your layout is always a good idea and always a great new investment. So we really can't wait to see all of you at the Railroad Hobby Show in January. And while we're not quite ready to reveal all of our surprises that we have in store, one thing I can tell you about is our locomotive design sweepstakes. Now, you'll remember back in 2017 when we announced the Tier 4 Jivo project, we produced a small limited run of red Scale Trains branded locomotives. We gave some of those locomotives to our select retailers as a small thank you for being part of our network. But we also sold some of those locomotives through scaletrains.com. Well, with the ES44 project and our rebranding that just occurred earlier this year, we were thinking about some fun and creative ways that we could offer another Scale Trains branded locomotive. So with the ES44, we were kicking around some ideas in the marketing department, but there was just something that was missing. So we thought, what better way than to get our customers together and involved in on the design? There's a group on Facebook that I like to follow called Freelance Model Railroading, and there's a lot of really creative modelers in there that are always coming up with interesting custom paint schemes for their fantasy railroads. So we wanted to involve everyone with an opportunity to design the next Scale Trains branded locomotive. So the sweepstakes begins today. All of the rules and all of the information for the sweepstakes can be found on scaletrains.com as well as the digital assets for the design. You can download them or you can even print off if you're old school and like to draw. You can print them off, draw your design, and either scan it and email it to us or you can send it by snail mail. Again, all of the information, all the deadlines, on scaletrains.com. After we get all of the entries in and the selected time comes before Amherst, we'll pick our top three favorite designs and then we will allow you to vote on what your favorite is. The winner of the sweepstakes will be announced at Amherst and their prize will be an all new rivet counter ES44 locomotive with their locomotive paint scheme. We're really excited for the show. We can't wait to see you guys. We'd like to say thank you to the Amherst Railway Society and our friends at Virtual Railfan for hosting us. We'll see you at the show. And you're live. Hey everybody, welcome back. And just to review, a little story about scale trains. Shane first called me and he says, hey, you know, we're doing this travel and road show in which they have a gorgeous pickup truck and a 40 foot long trailer. Can we bring the trailer to the show? And I said, Allied member, you could do what you want. So we were all set to bring this 20 by 40 foot trailer to the show and just show everybody what was going on. It's all decorated for scaletrains.com, et cetera. I said, you cannot bring the pickup truck into the building too. 
And and although they do they do allow internal combustion engines, but it would just take up too much space. And then he called me back not uh, about a month ago and said, it's too windy, it's snowy up there. I forgot what the weather was like up there. We're not gonna bring the, sh the, the trailer, we're gonna bring our regular booth back. And I said, that's fine. I, I would have loved to have seen the trailer. I said, you can bring it and park it outside. He goes, nah, I, you know, I've been talking to a lot of truckers and it's windy up that way and we don't wanna take the chance and all that kind of stuff. So, so we talked about what they may or may not bring, but let's go look at where they are actually located in the buildings. But first, let me just go over a little, a little preview to all of this, because we're going to be doing this where are they located with every single person. You know there are four buildings. I actually call it five buildings. We've got the Better Living Center, we've got Young, and we've got Stroh, and that's pretty much the order in which they came about. And then we've got Mallory North and Mallory South, and there's a big hallway with some offices uh, uh, connecting the two. Uh, while it is under one roof, uh, the, the folks at the Eastern States count that as two buildings. So we have five buildings indoors. If you look at the map, and we'll tell you how to look at the map, which gets updated from now right up until showtime, um, there's, a, there's a, a part of the center of the map that shows you where all the buildings are relative to one another. But, but scaletrains.com is actually in the BLC, Better Living Center. You'll hear all of us call it the BLC. And they are located in section 34A. And that's basically dead square in the middle of uh, the Better Living Center. Now, when you first walk in the, the door, gate nine, as they call it, that's what we call the floor managers and all of us have nicknamed as Main Street. And the cross street is actually Broadway. So if you head up Main Street and then take a right at Broadway, right before the Amherst Belt Lines layout, you will bump into scale trains on the left. So they're dead square in the middle of the Better Living Center. You should not have any trouble finding them. And, and they're not gonna move between now and the show because they've been in that spot for a while now. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. So there we have it with Scale Trains. And once again, Scale Trains, thanks for your allied membership and all of your sponsorships uh, going forward. Now, next up, a live interview with our president, the president of the Amherst Railway Society. I'm going to move my chair over a little bit and let's bring Joe Biagioni on stage. Come on up, Joe. Thanks, John. And let me I mean, Conductor John. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah. You're banned for life. I know. <laughs> oh, boy. So, Joe. You've been president for not quite two years. Um, you're in your second year as president, correct? Correct. All right. And, and, and tell me, during your tenure, what has Amherst Railway Society been up to? I know I mentioned a lot of stuff, but you're responsible for a lot of that stuff. What sticks out in your mind? Well, as you know, I've been whining to you about the year of presidency that I didn't get because of the pandemic. So first and foremost, we've been surviving and we've been doing a good job. Um, and like everybody who's got a railroad and stuff, they spent the pandemic working on it. Well, we've been working on the society. Um, the board of directors um, has been united and we've been doing all kinds of stuff. And I wanna, while I'm here, I wanna thank them. Okay. Well, I, let me interrupt you because you did an unbelievable job with the long range planning committee. By yeah, putting, weren't they by, great? By putting that together and having them do their thing, they came up with some great ideas that'll last in the future. So thanks, and for, it's, thanks, um, thanks for that. Yeah, and um, there's stuff that we don't see, right? And that'll benefit the organization. So we've been, done lots of that things, right? And like you were mentioning, we, we got out, I'm a Beltline guy. I've, I've been that way for 20 plus years. And so we finally got back out doing the belt lines yeah. and the train shows. So that's been awesome. Yeah, I've often um, said the belt lines, you guys are our best reps yeah. for, for marketing and, and, and you know, promotion. Yeah, we work hard at that, but we also have a good time. Okay, so that's, that's really important. And you know, um, so what's one thing that strikes me about the year is everybody that I run into says, boy, I miss the people at the show. Yeah. So finally, I'm getting my show, okay? <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it, you know? And the people out there, um, I wanna first say, hey, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, and my Christmas wish is that you all get an Alco on and eat the tree, all right? <laughs> That's the important part. The, um, the things that have been going on here is we've been planning a lot. And um, 
some of it is like the seven and a quarter um, railroad outside. We're talking about doing a garden railroad. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as you mentioned, we have uh, O scale three rail operating layout in this building, which is important. Yes, um, one of the things you talked about was let's yep. get as many different railroads and as many different scales in this building so people could see what this is all about. A right. great idea. And we're in the process of working on an HO layout and we're in discussions of an N scale layout. And it's it just doesn't happen overnight, but we're working on it and we've had a tough budgetary season. So we don't have all the money that we want. Um, and that's because no show. Right. So um, as much as we're looking forward to seeing everybody, we need to generate the revenue to keep yep. this organization well, and this building open. And I'm going to do that for you this year. Yeah. So thank you. That'll be great. <laughs> yeah. So my next question was going to be, what have you done lately? But boy, you just gave us a whole bunch of things you've been doing lately. Well, so, so I mean, this afternoon I was taking down trees with a crane. Is that what you mean? So tell me, you've got probably six months left in your term. After that, you're going to be the immediate past president for another year. Yeah. So I'll need your help there. Um, and um, tell me what you think you want to get accomplished in the next six months. Um, well, I've always worked on getting, giving the members more bang from the buck. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I want to get more activities in the building. I want the building to be open monthly to to members on on a Saturday, we do have we've gone back to our meetings, which is nice. Yep, um, and we've been slowly getting more and more people in the building as we do this. But um, I want to have activities where it's open once or twice, or if we can, four times a month. I right. would love that. Yeah, me too. I would love that. All right, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. And um, to start using this facility as we we can. Yep. Um, and I want to, you know. We have the O scale down to, I want to run trains in this building. Okay. <laughs> I want to run trains. Um, and that's one of my primary things that we're doing. I still got the, the hidden stuff to do. I got a bunch of things with membership and meetings and of uh, committees and things like that. And so that when the next guy comes in, he's got a good hold of stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah. We, we, this is actually a joint plea <laughs> for help. Right. If you want to get more involved, just let us know, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah we, we need some help. Right. It, yeah. We end up we end up doing everything pretty much ourselves, and we want more people involved. Yeah. And 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 there we go. And through the summer, we had work parties outside. We also did yeah. the landscaping out here with food. I might add. Yeah. And hot, hot dogs and hamburgers yeah. every work session. We um we have projects that we have to do to this building. Okay. Yeah and just to sustain it and keep it going. And the building committee has got things planned that we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so there's plenty of stuff, right? And so I don't care if you're a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, I need your help. Yeah, definitely. Okay? Um, I second so that. We can keep going, you know? Great. Um, the guy that uh, I'm hopefully when I'm done, the guy that's going to take over my job, he's going to be set up with an easier task as we go through, right? And that's, John, John's the president elect. Okay, I conductor John now. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> what a team, what yeah. a team. <laughs> and uh, some of the good stuff that we've, you know, John, remember, I guess I think back, man, virtual meetings, I know we were forced to have them, but it's been a lifesaver for us. Yes, yeah, and they're fun. Yeah. And, and we got more people to show us what they were doing than I've ever seen before. And yeah. we need to get back to that. And, and we right. will. As soon as we get going with the show, we're going back to uh, weekly uh, uh, show and tells, we used to call them. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Joe, we got to move on. I guess. I really appreciate you coming over, yeah, over here yeah. tonight. Right. Thanks to very everybody. much. Happy right. holidays. You know, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at the show. All right. Cool. Stay right here with us and, okay. and, and until we go to the next segment. So right now, everybody, uh, let's go take a closer look at that virtual rail fan camera in Springfield, Mass. Let's go see what's going on in Springfield right now. Take it away, Springfield.
Hey, everybody, next on our program is Dwarven Enterprises. And these folks do things, with, they do lighting without wires. So it's really very cool. I want you to take a look at their ad before we bring um, Michael Groves on in a Zoom interview. Uh, so check out what they're doing. And, and they, I have a couple of their starter kits and it is amazing stuff. I have actually seen uh, at a couple of uh, railroads where we operate on, on Tuesday evenings in our round robin groups, uh, I've actually seen it firsthand. And what I love about it is the lights are so tiny. They actually look like they're to scale and you can't because it's all through, um, 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 I guess it's Lucite. I don't know. Michael will correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they, they look great and you can't see the light source, the way he's built this thing. So really interesting stuff. We're going to go after we talk and, and, and see a little presentation from Mark, uh, from Michael. We're going to we're going to talk about where he's located um, in the um, in the show. And uh, let's go uh, and see if Mike is uh, on board now. Michael, are you there? Hello, Michael. There he is. Hey, there he is. Hey, John. Good to see you, my friend. Great to see you. Long time no see, right? <laughs> That's right. M Michael, let everybody know where you are located right now with that gorgeous layout in the background that you use for all your testing, by the way. Thank you very much. I'm located in central Pennsylvania in Mechanicsburg. Yeah, and I've got some of my layout behind me where I've got even my, yeah, my railroad crossing bells and all those sort of things ready to go, John. Excellent. And, and we, I, 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 I need to confess to folks, we were on earlier just to make sure everything was working. But when you were showing me some of your layout, I recognize some of the spots that you use in your ads, which really look great. So uh, very glad to have you here. So let me, let me start out with this question. Uh, Michael, you've got this tagline, which I love, lighting without wiring. What is so special about that product concept? Well, John, I'm going to answer it in two ways. First is the quick way and then a slightly longer way. So really, if I grab a lamp lighter box, which I think you can see reasonably well there. Yeah, I can see it great. Great. It's got some fibers stuck into it already. But if I just take a fiber, so I take a fiber, I cut it, and I just insert the fiber straight into the box, I got light. Wow. That's all I can do. So, I mean, it's as quick as that. So that's what makes lighting without wiring a fantastic approach to doing lighting. So maybe, maybe I, that I, is fantastic. Now I understand you have a presentation that you'd like to show us so we could better see products, right? And I know yep. you have to share your screen. So let's, let's do it. Let's do that, John. Absolutely great. Here we go. So gotcha. I started doing John way back was I used to use all of these tools for, you know, putting my lights up and I moved house and unfortunately the, the labels fell off the wires and that was really disturbing. So I thought, what am I going to do? I can't go back to doing this. Plus my eyesight was deteriorating a bit. So I decided, okay, well, why go with LED lights? Well, they've got polarity problems. So you've got to wire them the right way. Otherwise they just don't work. And you've got to put resistors in series with them. And then you end up with something like this, John, where you think you've done a nice job, but boy, what a tangle you can get into. That and might so have been a shot at my railroad early on. <laughs> absolutely. I think it's a shot of many people's railroads. Definitely. Mine. So I thought, well, I better not let this happen to myself. And so I, you know, and I thought of, yeah, oh, this wiring spaghetti, it's a bit of a challenge, you know, and there's me sort of under my, under my system. So... What I did, John, is I actually then just put a very simple system together. I put, I took an LED from a car headlight, and this is about 12 years ago. I then stuck a fan behind it, powered it like crazy, put a piece of uh, heat shrink tubing in, in front of it, and nailed that to a board, and then just stuck optical fibers into it. And that really was my layout lighting for many years. So that, that was my sort of start. I just decided I was not going down the wiring route. So what happened was my grandson, my oldest grandson, decided he wanted to work with me. We said, well, let's start and build a product. So we actually named the company Dwarven. 
odd name to name a company, but he was into Tolkien and enjoying those uh, books. And so that's how we sort of noodled up with that, that name. But so we came up with the lamplighter concept. It's really a very simple. That's where all the optics and the electronics is to make it simple for the customer. In fact, it's a simple, really, I say one, two, three. One, put the lamp lighter box underneath your layout, screw it in, drill a hole. You've got to be careful when you're using one of those drills, you know, especially in this COVID days. Um, and then uh, insert the fiber into the lamp lighter and stick it up into a building. So that's really how simple the whole system is. So that really just gives it to you graphically. There it is, stick a fiber into a building, stick a, uh, a lamp in and just put the fiber down into the lamp lighter. A very, very simple concept. But you know what's interesting, John, when I started this, I had no idea about some of the unique features of fiber optics. And those I've sort of learned over the years. In fact, one I just learned at a show. I was at a show recently, John, and um, a gentleman came up and he said, that is perfect lighting. And I went, oh, really? Explain. He said, well, I'm a stage lighting guy. That's what I do for a living. So what you want to do is you want to create pools of light. So things move around. It's like a train moves or whatever, moves into the pool of light and out of it. It gives you a much greater effect of your lighting. He said, that is exactly what you're getting from fiber optics, which you won't get from an LED. And I went, wow, thanks for explaining that to me. That's a new bit of news for me. So, and you see it there, there's our, um, on the left-hand side, you see our industrial building lamp. And on the right-hand side, one of our swan neck lamps. And again, it's just sort of cast light where you need it, but not flooding the area. That there's our industrial building lamp on one of my little buildings on my layout. A Couple of other things, John, that I learned was you can paint the fiber, just pop a drop of paint on the end of translucent paint. And there's that, my little house on fire with a guy trying to escape. Better still, <laughs> you can cut the fiber a little bit, damage it actually. There's 60 lights on my English pub on my layout. And I just painted them green and red, green and red with the translucent paint. And there's my Christmas lights. I never imagined doing that. Until yeah, that's cool. Old. I love it. You like that? Yeah, yeah very cool. much. And the inside of the building's lit again with just the fibers. And there's actually fibers under the umbrellas too, just lighting. So just a lot of things that I've discovered I could do with them. There's back of a, a car, you know, with, with the red lights, the headlights on a, in a car. Again, very simple with fiber optics. So that's, um, yeah, that's really um, a bit of the unique features about um, fiber optic lighting. So Michael, rather than ask you the question, let me just make a statement. I, you know, I, people need to come and see this in person at the show. I, I just, I mean, this, this looks cool, but it's even better looking when you actually can see it for yourself. So I'm, 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 I'm suggesting that people need to come and see you. And you would agree with that, yeah. I would agree with that, John, and in fact, I would invite you to come to see us at the Amherst show. Um, there you will see the Dwarven sign and usually you'll see my lovely wife who is my top saleswoman. In fact, she's my only woman in sales, but she's a great <laughs> one and you'll enjoy meeting with her. And there's a bit of our layout. So yeah, you're gonna actually see us at the show. You'll actually see maybe one of our dwarves. Um, there's Benjamin, he's our old, youngest uh, of the grandsons. He makes all of our lights for us. Um, or you'll see David, one of our other dwarves, he makes all of our lamp lighter boxes. So this really is a home business with, uh, well, it's not really slave labor, but it's, you know, they, they uh, <laughs> give an enormous amount to, to this. It's all made here in, in the United States. Cool. Hey, fact, before, before we, um, uh, uh, we move along and show people where you are, uh, tell us what's new. What are you going to bring to the uh, show since the uh, last time, which was the 2020 show? All right, I will show you that. I was just going to tell you that at the show, we're actually going to do some seminars. One's all about fiber. Oh, optics. yeah, yeah, yeah. Please tell us about that. That's right. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how I got into it, but a lot more depth of that. And then the second one is really, um, whether you're using fiber optics or whatever, how to design your lighting system, which gets into things like, you know, um, how many lumens, spacing of lights, um, you know, what's 
prototypical and so on. And so we're going to give seminars on each of the days, Thursday through the Sunday. And here's a bonus. If you come to the seminar, you get a special discount coupon for the booth. So that's that's a great special. That's fantastic. That's right. You're, so you are in the clinics, the two-day clinics before the show, and you're going to be doing clinics also during the show. That's a, that's a lot of clinics. That's great. You'll really yep. spread the word, I'm sure. Yep. Fantastic. Great, John. Yep. Um, and it really helps our customers see what's going on. Plus, we can then talk about our new products. So yeah. last time we were at um, Amherst, we had nothing in the way of animation. Um, we actually joined Voices with a, a company called Model Train Technology, and they actually helped us develop this, in fact, um, by our specification. So we could actually do flashing and blinking. Um, and the idea is, you know, you can put this together with some detectors, with some railroad crossings and a bell, and you've got a fully integrated railroad crossing system. And that's, that's sort of a, a good system. It's blinking, flashing, does lots of other things than just railroad crossings. So, you know, we've come up with sort of that sort of a kit where you see a bell, the crossings, um, the detectors, and the flash unit. But we've just, John, just released um, a, what we're calling our dedicated railroad crossing system um, using a lamp lighter DFL, dedicated flasher. And we've put it together as a kit. Within 10 minutes of me announcing this, the, yeah, it was ringing. The, the sales were happening. <laughs> I was just amazed at this. And this I, I can I can understand why, having seen for myself your your uh, your early work. So I could see this going like hotcakes. Actually, very well, good. It really has. So that's been a, that's a brand new product that's only just been released two weeks ago and is doing very well. It will eventually will add in the block signals that actually can work with that. Um, so and then the other thing we did, John, very simply, is we just decided, you know, people have taught us switch machines, but often you can't tell which way is the switch oriented. So all we did was we just put a little controller, which we Velcro literally onto the side of a tortoise machine. We connect up using suitcase connectors to pin one and eight on a tortoise machine. And from that, we can drive our lights. So basically, there you go. You've, you've wow. got light immediately there which are gonna show you exactly which way your switch is. So if you've got a, a switch ladder, for example, and you're just looking down it, you can see everyone so simple to mount on. Excellent, excellent. Well, Michael, we certainly look forward to seeing you at the show. And right. um, uh, with that, I wanna thank you for being a part of this evening's preview, the first ever preview show. And hey, it's uh, less than 60 days and we'll be seeing you in, in person. Absolutely, John. I'm looking forward to that. And what you may also see by then is a brand new lamp, which we're just trying to put it together, which is a yard lamp. Oh. So there you see it beaming down on a couple of the carriages there. So, yeah. 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 so there's going to be some new things coming out. So, John, I'm looking forward to being there with you guys. That will be a great, great load of fun. Absolutely. Well, Michael, thank you one more time for, your, for spending time with us this evening. And uh, now we're going to break away and we're going to show everybody where you're located in the show. That'll help me find it too, John. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> you haven't moved, <laughs> but we'll show you again anyways. So <laughs> let's go. <laughs> one final thanks, Michael. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and, and you've got such a wonderful product. I'm so glad you're a part of our show. So thanks again. Thanks very much, John. All Appreciate right, so it. now, guys, let's let's head over to uh, our map. Let's go see what, where uh, Dwarven is located. So they are in the uh, uh, Young Building. And what I love about the Young Building, it is the intersection between all the buildings. And um, the, these folks uh, are located in Section 78, which is right smack in the middle when you first walk in from the east on the Young Building, there's, I'm closing my eyes to visualize it. There's an entrance on the west, there's an entrance on the east. So on the left and the right, as you look at the map, there's one at the top, the north side. But as you went, walk in from the Mallory Building at your back on the east side, section 78, you'll find uh, Dwarven right there. So in section 78 tables G and H, and you should be able to see them circled on the map uh, as we speak.
So uh, there you have it. And let's keep moving. Uh, next up is Bar Mills Scale Model Works. You know what I love about Bar Mills, especially Art? I know I've known Art Fahey for years. His building where he builds and does everything is in a reproduction of the strong main uh, uh, station. I, you, you pull up to the place and it looks like there's a station in his, on his property. And inside it's crammed with laser printers and, and, and inventory and all kinds of stuff. And boy, he's got a production like I've never seen. Step by step by step, all the parts needed, how to do this, how to do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it really um, allows you to see what's going on. We went to see Art uh, and he gave us the grand tour of the whole place. Oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago it was now, but he'd entertain anybody with advance warning at any time. He'll show you what's going on. He has got a world-class N-scale railroad in his basement, along with some F-scale equipment, et cetera. But he'll give you the grand tour and, and, and even sit you down and watch a few videos if you'd like. So, so uh, uh, you can't miss him. In, in the uh, Young Building, he's also in the Young Building, he's just a section away from uh, Dwarven, and uh, he's, he's, he's got those yellow tents, and he's got all the yellow floor mats, so you don't kill yourself on the, on the cement, but you can't miss Bar Mills and Art Fahey, and he's got some beautiful displays. I've got several, I was actually going to bring some pictures, but I, I just didn't pull it off on time. I've got several of his buildings on my railroad that are just gorgeous. And, and, and they look fantastic. So that said, let's go check out where Art Fahey and Bar Mills is located. All right, so they are in the Young Building. And, and honestly, if you, if you enter from any of the entrances, just look for the yellow tents. You can't miss them, but they are more down towards the east side of the Young Building. He's actually right in front of that restaurant that's there. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, doesn't matter, but he's right there in case he needs a snack. He can just walk right across the way. And it's section 79, what we call the west end of uh, that uh, display. So you can't miss them. And uh, the quality is really fantastic. He's one of the best of the laser kit builders I've ever seen. And he's been around. You know what he got, how he got his start? He got his start with building little billboards, little, little laser cut billboards of, of which I've got like 10 or so on my railroad. And they're cool because they're period based. So if you wanna have things from a certain period, he's got those billboards. He still makes them too, so it's cool. So thanks to Bar Mills and you'll see them in less than 60 days. Next up is Ron's books. Boy, have I got a story about Ron's books. We're talking about Lee and Ellie Rosenberg. And let me tell you a story, uh, guys, that goes way back. Way many years ago, Ron's books was never at the show. This is the largest railroad book dealer in the country. And he wasn't at our show. After several calls to Ron, I finally said, Ron, give it a shot. Come on. And he always wanted to, but whatever the reason, he never did. So he finally came to the show. I've gotten to know them. And Ron, uh, 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 sadly, passed away a few years ago now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and, and I, I, I miss him. Uh, but Lee and Ellie are still there doing a great job. And um, if you look at their ad, they, they actually are coming out with some new stuff and they'll be glad to tell you about it. So where are they located? Well, Ron's books, if you come into the Better Living Center through door nine, look all the way down Main Street and you'll see them. They're all the way to the end of Main Street. They're actually in section 2B as in Baker. And they have the entire, entire section of 2B. And it's worthy because they're the largest book dealers for railroads in the country. And you know what else they do? When we take collections, I show them the covers of what books we have and they give us a good price for them. And we pass that money on to the estates, the owners of the estates. So we, we've known them for a long time. They pass out our flyers endlessly throughout the year to all of their folks. So it's a wonderful thing. And, and I'm really appreciative. And I'm so glad they finally are in this show and they're here to stay, I'm happy to say. So. Next up, a live interview. So 
we have Bachman Industries, one of our allied members. So we've got three allied members. We've got scaletrains.com and we have Bachman. Bachman has also taken care of sponsoring our shuttles to and from uh, Union Station uh, to the show for a number of years. And uh, Ray Buteau is here from, and Ray's title I had to ask uh, was East, it is, <laughs> I shouldn't say was, uh, Eastern Regional Sales Manager. He's got all kinds of goodies for us to see, uh, all different scales, lots of great stuff. So I'm going to bring him up on stage. I am going to exit a little bit because I'm going to manipulate the camera so you could see this stuff, which is really worthy of checking out. Okay. And then when we, when we, uh, after we look at that, we'll go to where they're located in the Better Living Center. Uh, and then we're going to head off to a, uh, virtual real fan camera. But before we do that, let's see what's going on with Ray. So Ray, come on up. He's right in our studio audience. Come on up, Ray. I am going to move a few things out of the way and I am going to move myself out of the way, ladies and gentlemen. If we had a studio, you know, real television studio, studio, maybe next year, we could actually have a couple of cameras. But in the meantime, I'm going to switch my conductor duties to cameraman so we can see what's going on. So Ray, make sure you're in the camera. And let's take it away. I'll never fit in that camera. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're sort of pressed for time, but I want to take just a minute to tell you that at Bachman, we do shows all over the world, Nuremberg, Hong Kong, and all over the country. This is our favorite show. And I can't tell you how excited we are to be back. I can't wait to see some of uh, the usual suspects. Sean, Tom, Coach, all of the other manufacturers, because it's a very collegial group. Uh, you know, everyone thinks we're uh, at loggerheads with other manufacturers. We get along really, really well. So we are really excited to be back and we're excited to be here tonight. Now at Bachman, we make trains in many, many scales. And I've just brought a smattering to show you tonight in, uh, I guess all the scales. So we'll start out with N scale. And right here, let's see how this works out. John holding the camera. This is our N scale Streamline K4. How does that show? And uh, I'll turn it again so you can see the beautiful pin striping. Pensy famously had the torpedo K4s, but this was a second Streamline uh, locomotive, they put these on the fleet of modernism. And also an end scale, we have a new, pretty much scale size, lighted bumper. Here it is, it's an easy track, the whoops, oh well, bumper down. <laughs> the uh, electronics are underneath, and these look great, the little yellow light blinks, and uh, that will find its way onto many layouts. Many more things will be at Springfield to uh, show you in all of the scales. Uh, we'll move up to Thomas scale. Thomas is, <clears throat> uh, these are not Thomas characters per se. These are British outline brake coaches, um, brake vans, and they are track cleaners. They have a pad underneath and they really do a good job. And if you put just a drop of our track cleaning liquid on these, you'll be astonished by uh, how well the things work. We have two more, uh, here are two new Thomas characters. Those of you who uh, are fond of the island of Sodor know that there are narrow gauge trains there as well. And this is Peter Sam and Yellow Reneus. And I don't know why there are two Reneus is, but there are, so he's, <laughs> he's the yellow one. You can't fool me, I can tell colors. Now we get to our long running USRA 060, but these are new ones that have uh, scale and uh, road name specific tenders. They have separate, separate handrails on the tenders and the locomotives. So this is a, a locomotive that's been around for a while, but it's really nicely done. In ON30, 
I just brought a gondola uh, for East Broadtop. East Broadtop, as you all know, is now back in operation, which is wonderful. And we are going to have a lot of East Broadtop equipment. I have a couple of new easy track things to show. This is our HO easy track, but this is the concrete tie variation. Yeah, cool. So it's with all the brand new things we're doing in HO. Speaking of which, our uh, Charger locomotive, which is a tremendous locomotive, is uh, arriving daily. And everyone but the uh, Amtrak 50th anniversary one is now in stock and will be shipping this week, which is nice because I hear there's a some holiday coming up where people give each other trains. I don't know, <laughs> but those will be good. And here we have three rail easy track. And uh, that's great as well. So now we'll move up to the other side of the tracks. Also in large scale, we have some new egg liners, a butterfly, and a school bus with a blinking light. And these have proven so popular. We have them in O-Gage as well, uh, Christmas, 4th of July, Halloween and Easter. These have no motors, they're just paint samples, but in O-Gage, I'm sure they'll prove very, very popular. In large scale, we have our speeders. Again, this is a new um, paint sample, so it has no motor or gears. So that's why I can push it back. It will have a blinking light. We have several of those. Now, remember, in every one of these scales, we will have many, many more things to show you. Uh, in HO, new coil cars, 50-foot express reefers, uh, streamlined diners. In, uh, oh, in 30, we, in every scale, we have new sets. In HO, we're going to have a J3A Hudson, New York Central. So you, you really want to come to our booth and see the new things at the show. Now, also, I have here the <coughs> recently re-released 10-wheeler, which I'm going to run for you. People say, uh, you'll notice it's on big hauler track. And this was the original big hauler track from back in the late 80s. So we have made an awful lot of 10-wheelers in 30 years. But Don Sweet from RCS, you'll see his fit later, has put in a rail pro. Here's the Rail Pro. And I'll run this first without sound. It comes with a speaker and a, a non proprietary board. Let's see if we can look inside here, John. Here is the board, which makes it very easy to put in DCC or radio control, whatever you like. And uh, Don has that in. It comes with its own speaker. And now I go on to the uh, Rail Pro page. I don't know if this will show up. Touch the locomotives, touch the 10 wheeler. And here is the 10 wheeler with all its controls. Now let's see if I did this right and I don't run it on the floor. Look at how silently that runs and how smoothly. It now has a big Pittman motor, brass gears, completely redone tender. It's the uh, anniversary edition with the full valve gear. And it's uh, tremendous detail. The trucks are detailed. There's brake detail, underbody detail. The backup light will work when I turn, turn it on, which is an idea. Um, I'll go here. Now I'll turn the engine on. And I'll turn on the firebox. I don't know if we can swing around and get that, can you? No, 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 I will go to this page, and here's the bell. I hope it doesn't work. And Don put two whistles in for me. And the big boy whistle. 
whistle. I always have the thing to put water in the tender. Pull in the front. Down to the That's the blowdown. It's really blown down. All right. Anyway, people want to know why an engine that's been around for 30 years has suddenly increased in price. You can see all of the features that are on the locomotive now, plus the features that you can put in. And it's a great engine. You no longer look at this running down the track saying, oh, well, that's a pretty nice 10 wheeler. You look and say, wow, that's a really nice locomotive. It's got the same trucks that are on the C19 pickups through the axles, and the detail is great. Scale, um, <clears throat> scale back head, uh, couplers uh, either high or low, so you can go with the scale cars or the uh, big roller cars. And there's also a hook and loop coupler involved too. That takes a little bit of fitting, but not much. So that's what I have to show you. We will have much more. Um, in less than 60 days. We can't wait to see you all back there. And, uh, oh, wait, should I get back in here? Yeah. Oh, look, here I am. And uh, come to this show. If you can come to the show, you do not want to miss it. It's the best show, as far as I'm concerned, in the country. So that's it. That's my plug. Let me find my wallet so I could give you that five bucks. For, for, for Only for five. <laughs> well, no, that's fine. Seriously, I've known Ray forever, um, and he's done a lot of nice work for us. He did a he did a, uh, a raffle layout for us one year. On thirty raffle layout, I went down to his house to pick it up, and so Bachman has done so much for us. We are greatly appreciative, and I'm glad you were here tonight, Ray. Right. And I'll see you in. Uh, uh, gosh, I should have figured out exactly how many days it was, but in, in, in on the 29th and 30th of January, I'll see you. That would be great. We look forward to it extremely. Cool. All right. Thank, well, thank you, you so much. I appreciate it, Ray. Okay. Hey, next up, everybody, uh, we're going to do a little insert uh, and go to uh, another virtual rail fan uh, camera. We're going to Ashland, Virginia. So let's take it away in Ashland. Let's see what's going on in Ashland.
and live. Hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed uh, Ashland, Virginia. Let's talk next about trains with a Z.com. And I talked to Scott uh, Griggs, uh, and I've got a good little story that goes with it towards the end here. And I asked him, why would someone want to come by and visit your booth? And he goes, it's great to see the website, but come and talk to us. See the human element behind trains.com. Scott, his wife, Melinda, Justin, one of the buying specialists, they have an incredible format of what they're doing. And, and if you're looking to sell your collection, they're one of the first people you should call. Okay, and I've got a story behind that we'll talk about in a second. So while it's great to go visit the trains.com website and wait until you see what's new with that, I'll tell you about that in a minute. It's, it's, it's really important for you to go meet these folks. I've talked to Scott every year at the train show and he's been coming for, oh gosh, I, I, at least over 10 years now. And, and, and we've got some good things to say and what he's been up to and what he's doing and, and really what, what some of the things are doing. They're still doing the regular stuff. Come by. Uh, they've really upped their game, new, new graphics. They've got all kinds of swag, you know, those little giveaways um, and the usual drawing for a $50 gift card. So all kinds of stuff, fresh merchandise that hasn't hit their website yet. They're bringing it to the show first. So you've got to talk to them. Okay. They've revamped their newsletter. They're doing all kinds of stuff. They've, they, 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 they actually have this wish list uh, functionality. They've improved that. And they've got over 275,000 items in their, in their catalog now. And check out their reward program. It's, it's a three-tiered reward program that, that will help you uh, get triple rewards and all kinds of cool stuff. So spend some time with them and you'll be able to see. So the little story, I call them up. I've got a collection. I send them pictures of the whole thing. About a week goes by, giving them enough time to evaluate what the pictures look like. And they say, okay, we got it. I'll give you X thousands of dollars for it. And it was in the thousands. And I said, you got a deal. This is great. They send me the forms, all totally automated, prepaid. They said, just stick these on the boxes and send them. I send them back about three weeks later, just to make sure they evaluate the stuff correctly. I get a big check in the mail. Done. Hello, trains.com. So it was a snap, guys, and you got to go talk to them. They were tremendous. So now let's go see where they're located. So they are in the Better Living Center. They're in section three. So that puts them all the way in, all the way down Main Street, all the way up north, as far as you can go. They are against the wall. They're in section three. So when you get to Ron's books, you hook a right and walk along and their booth is on the left. You cannot miss this booth. It's huge. It's a 20 by 20 booth. They're doing all kinds of cool stuff. Don't forget, they're bringing things deliberately to the show that hasn't hit their website yet. So we're talking BLC section three, um, and they have the entire uh, booth area. There's a couple of extra tables in section three, but you, you will not miss trains.com. So uh, keep that in mind. Next, we're headed over to our third allied member, and that is Spring Creek Model Trains. And we're talking with Deb, uh, Dave, Mark Zucker. And these guys are from the Midwest. These guys are so friendly. It's amazing. When I first met them, when they wanted to come to the show, they said, hey, we have just a couple of things, but we need like uh, 500 square feet. So I said, holy cow. And they are exclusive dealers in some products and et cetera. So check out their ad and go and see them. Their place is huge. And we talk about, because this is the first uh, 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 exhibitor that's in the uh, Stroh building that we talked about so far. Stroh building has changed dramatically in that the better, uh, the Eastern States, the Big E, the uh, Eastern States exhibition uh, folks have added a lot of storage. So I lost a lot of tables. So there's a big wall of storage on the north side of Stroh now. I lost 20 tables. I was able to relocate most of them but I had some people move out of the building as much as they didn't want to. I, I got to tell you, with the Stroh building, people, there was a rumor out there that, oh, we're going to close the Stroh Stro building. I, I would, first of all, never do that. It's too convenient to everything else. 
but I just have to rent additional space somewhere else. So it, it, it's the same dollars when you look at it from a business standpoint, but the convenience of where it's located is just too important. And the people that are there love that place because everybody's used to where they are. And that goes for now uh, Spring Creek as well. So let's go look at uh, that video. So let's go check out the video of our third allied member, Spring Creek. Roll it, guys. Hey everybody, Mike, Jeff, Spring Creek Bottle Trains. We got uh, Dave and Deb here with us, so we're Good excited. Morning. Good morning. Yeah. yeah, excited to have mom and dad here with us today. So we are getting ready to kind of talk about Spring Creek Bottle Trains here and uh, excitement of Amherst coming up here in a couple months that we're gonna be out there. So we'll be taking the traveling road show here of uh, the Spring Creek uh, train show vehicles all out to Amherst and be setting up our booth out there. So we'll be located in the Stroh building. So definitely come on by, come check us out. We're glad to meet everybody and uh, talk to you throughout the show. So um, Dad, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the uh, history of Spring Creek? So, okay. Um, we, Debbie and I started Spring Creek in the year 2000. So this is our 21st year uh, it's always been a dream of mine to have a hobby store and had no idea that it would grow to this point. Um, there are now six people that work here and we're able to take your orders and ship every day. Uh, looking forward to coming to Springfield, Mass. It's always one of my favorite shows every year. You know, I enjoy the drive out, the drive back, do a little rail fanning on the way. So we'll see you in a... Oh, that's exciting. So that's awesome. Mom, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, kind of our history with train shows and everything? Yeah, well, you know, back in the day when we didn't have a store building yet, our income was through the train shows. Um, we set up local and then we gradually worked our way into doing national every year, no matter where it's at. We load up and go. Um, we do the Amherst show now, and we are so excited for that. It's yep. one of the best shows yes, we... Yes, we are. Best show in the country. <laughs> and uh, the little ones around here, we still do. Uh, so no matter where you are, check our website. See where our next scheduled show's at, because we love to meet all of our old customers, yes. see them again every year. Get to get to shake hands and learn about what you've been up to, and uh, we're really excited now to get to go and see you all again at Amherst. Two years ago was a long time, so yeah, come out, come out and uh, say hi and meet the boys. There you go. Well, as she said, Mike and I are getting to go this year. Uh, our normal helpers aren't able to, so Mike and I are coming out. So you get to meet the two crazy guys in the video. <laughs> so. <laughs> we love doing there's them, but you know, there's it's an amateur hour for sure, and we love doing it though. Uh, as Dad said, we can take your orders, so we have an interactive website that has some of our product up there. We don't have everything, as you can see in the background, we have a ton of stuff. We do have two employees that their job is to take your orders over email and phone. So if you want to get in touch with us, you can get us through those. Our website is www.springcreekmodeltrains.com and our phone number is 402-365-7628 and we can't wait to come out and see you. As Mike said, we're out in the Stroh building, so yep. look for us there. Come see us in the Stroh building, yeah. Hit us hit us up, you know, hit any one of us up. You can talk to us about the exclusive runs that we got coming and that we have done, right? Yeah. How many are we up to now, Jeff, on the exclusive uh, runs? I think we're about 28. Yeah, so our latest one, Dad, is... Uh, what a Bowser car, um, right? Yeah, a balla, ballast car from Bowser. We did three extra numbers in Burlington Northern. Yep. Yeah. So definitely be on the lookout for that. There's been yeah. some, you'll be seeing, by the time you see this video, there's some new stuff out there too that's coming. So yeah, we're uh, working right now with Rapido, Exact yeah. Rail, 
Intermountain on uh, additional custom runs. Yep, yeah. so things are coming, so just keep on the lookout there on our website and everything for those items too. So as Jeff said, the Stroh building, come and see the two crazy guys behind the camera here in Deschler. And uh, of course, get to see the experts, yep. uh, Dave and Deb, that have been running the show here for 21 years. So we look yeah. forward to seeing everybody. So can't wait. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Next up, everybody, let's go check out railroadhobbyshow.com. But first, let me just educate everybody out there. We actually have two websites. We have the Amherst Railway, I, I beg your pardon, we have amherstrail.org, which is the Amherst Railway Society's website, it tells you all about what we do and philanthropy and all that kind of good stuff. But we also have railroadhobbyshow.com, which is dedicated just to the show, the train show. Okay, so if we head over there to railroadhobbyshow.com, you'll notice a main menu across the top. And the one I go to the most, and I think most people go to the most, and then I'll tell you the second most uh, traveled area, is uh, the uh, main menu across the top that says about the show. Okay, so if you, if you head to about the show, all right, then you'll see a lot of lists of anchors in there. Uh, on, on that page, head down to accommodations in the area and click on that. Those are simply called anchors on a web page. When you click on accommodations in the area, all that does is bring you down to the right spot on that one long continuous page. So if you look at accommodations in the area, you'll see all the hotels. Now, I think all of them have 2022 rates by now. Uh, we, we hadn't heard from a couple as early as a month ago, but check it out. It'll tell you the rates. Some of them actually have links that if you click on, it'll go to their reservation section automatically, which includes our discounts. But if you look at each portion of the website where there's a, a new uh, hotel motel listed, you'll actually see how far they are from the show. Now, not all of them have done that, but um, the way I did it, uh, when I was first uh, building that site is I, I just had um, the Google Maps on another page and I had the uh, 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 the Big E show in one and then I put in the address of the hotel and it instantly tells you how far it is from the show. But the closest hotel is our premier hotel and that is the Sheridan uh, Monarch, downtown Springfield. Uh, we have all our clinics there um, and it's really about one I forget, it's less than two miles away from the show. If you're heading out of the Big E, you head down Memorial Ave, go over the bridge over the Connecticut River and you crash right into the place. So it's right there. So keep that in mind. And, and if you haven't made reservations yet, you, you darn well better get started because a couple of the hotels are booked. This happens every single year. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we're gonna come back to this site in a second, but let's take a, a, a quick break and let's go to Tucson, Arizona on a virtual rail fan camera. So uh, let's head on over to uh, Tucson. Guys, take it away.
Hey everybody, we're back from Tucson. And um, next up, let's talk about Atherd. How can we not talk about Atherd, right? So usually who I talk to with Atherd is Jim Wigan. But you know, they're celebrating. If you look at their ad, and and uh, you'll by the way, you'll see everybody that's been listed this evening in the uh, uh, in the insert in a Railroad Model Craftsman magazine, which uh, will be out on the 20th of December. So everybody we're highlighting here is going to be in that insert. But check out these ads. What we, what we noticed when we were building the insert was the ads are really very well done this year. Uh, and 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 when it comes to Athern. This is their 75th anniversary. They've been around since 1946. So, I, you know, and I think of Athern when I was growing up and I really got interested in, in, in trains, I was thinking of their blue box kits, right? Not super detail as far as the thickness of the stirrups and the handrails and stuff, but at the time they were the best. And I still to this day love them. And, 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 uh, and, and they were probably the best of the, of the time, but boy, have they got stuff now. But the blue box kits, and then I find out there were yellow box kits before the blue box kits. So we're talking seriously old. And I have some Atherin yellow box where the sides of the kits were metal and stuff. And I run them. I run them on my railroad. I, not, not so much other than they look cool because they're so old. They're kind of like the Harley Davidson of, uh, of box cars, right? They, they'll run forever. So it's really uh, interesting stuff. So where can we find? Ather, uh, and where we'll find them is in the front, Mallory North, okay? So as soon as you walk in the main building of Mallory, which is just underneath that geodesic dome, and, and by the way, that geodesic dome was right where the siding used to be that came all the way in from uh, the track that crosses the street, um, and, and used to go to uh, the, uh, the young and the uh, uh, in the Stroh building. It used to go right through where that geodesic dome was. So anyways, can you tell I'm disappointed that there's no siding at the, at the Big E? Um, go in the entrance, the north entrance of the Mallory North building, and uh, you walk in and they're in section 126. They're right there in front of you. You walk in, bang, Athen, right, at uh, right at your left side. So you'll see them there. And they've got new product release. They're surprising us all with some new product release at this show. So come and see what they've got. And, and I actually am sworn to secrecy until but we're going to have some ads the day before and then the ads the next day on Saturday, Sunday. The Saturday ad is the secret until the unveiling and the Sunday we're going to demonstrate and talk about what those ads are. Cool. All right. So where are we headed next? We're actually headed now to Azatrax and John Parsons and talk about signals and circuits made easy. Guys, this is incredible. Made easy is not words, not the right words. It's made real easy. And we've got a bunch of our members that have that uh, uh, equipment on their railroad. And, and a, we have a couple of members that have actually worked very extensively with John and uh, with fantastic results, I might have, and even custom made a couple of signal colors and that kind of thing for our, our members. So, so John is open to all kinds of ideas. Just talk to him and you'll be able to see him at the show. He's in the Better Living Center. So we're switching back to the Better Living Center. He's in section 63, and he's in tables I, J, and K. Now, where is that? This is an easy one. You walk in the door, you look to your right, he's right there. So he's right at the entrance, and uh, we're talking Asatrax and John Parsons. So check him out. Check his ad out. Check his ad out when it comes out in the, in the handout, and uh, we'll see him there. Okay? Now... Let's talk about Turbo Liner Memories and Dale Johnson. Dale has this incredible story and he's developed it into a clinic. And he's going to give that clinic on Saturday and Sunday in the Young Building Quiet Room. If you look at the map of the Young Building when you can, not right now, um, you'll be able to see where he's located. But at the top of the building, we'll head there in a minute, you'll see the Young 
quiet clinic room. So he's going to talk about, it. he's got a nice slide presentation there. And there's a great story about the turbo liners. Did you know the tagline for Amtrak back when these came out? I, I'm not the expert. I'm thinking 70s was uh, hitch a ride on the future. These were the best looking, coolest looking futuristic trains that they had come out with. They didn't last so long though. I'm not sure why, but Dale will tell you why. He's got a great story about it. And he's given clinics. If you miss it on Saturday, he's going to be there on Sunday. Same time slot. I'll show you where to go to see the clinics. That's where we're headed next when we head back to railroadhobbyshow.com. So he tells a great story. It's in a nice quiet room. You're away from the crowd, ambient noise of the crowd, the, the, the constant noise from all the people talking. So you can get away in a quiet room and listen to a great story about a great piece of history uh, when it comes to Amtrak. Cool. Okay, let's head back to railroadhobbyshow.com. This will be our last visit there, guys. And, and really, let's look at the top across the top menu, all right? And what we're looking at there is clinics, okay? And who's who. So if you go to clinics, you'll be able to see the lineup of all our clinics, easy stuff. The Thursday and Friday clinics are sign up in advance clinics, and there is a charge but it's well worth it because we're talking 20 clinics on both days. They're going to repeat a bunch of them because we found from people that have attended, they want to see more, but they couldn't because there were just too many. So we, we scaled back the number of clinics and we are repeating a lot of them on both days. So people could see many more clinics because theoretically with the time slots, you could only see eight clinics. Now you'll be able to see a lot more. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, the next place to go to on uh, railroadhobbyshow.com across the top is who's who, okay? And veterans of the show, they actually go here the most. They know where to stay. They know when the show is. They, they have the GPS co coordinates. They don't need to take a bus, and, and you'll see all of those. Uh, but they go there for two reasons. They go there for the exhibitors list and the map of the buildings. And you need to go there often because we update it often. Right now we have 337 exhibitors. I suspect we'll have another 20 or 30 more. And I may slide people around depending on who's coming. So head over to who's who, uh, and then go look at the, the left side menu. And you'll see where it says uh, directory of exhibitors. And if you click on that, you get your choice of downloading a PDF, which is a pure alphabetical listing, or you could actually download an Excel spreadsheet. The reason why we did that is when you download the Excel spreadsheet, you could sort on any of the columns. So if you wanna spend some time in the BLC, you could sort on BLC and then by table section. And as you walk around, it'll keep you in order of how you walk around the building. So you have your ability to sort on the columns when you use an Excel spreadsheet. So that's why we did that. So keep that uh, in mind. Now also, you'll notice that there are version numbers of each of these documents. I think, I'm the one who does them, you think I remember. I think we're on version 2.0. Um, so keep your eye on that. The latest one is posted, whatever number that is. But when we get close to the show, the version number is 4.0 and then in caps, final. So you'll be able to see what's happening there, okay? So, so keep that in mind. And, and check out every aspect of uh, triple dub railroad hobby show.com. There's a lot of good information in there. So some old videos and there's some sound bites and pictures from past shows and, and commercials that we used to run and, and all kinds of extra stuff when you've got the time. So let's head over and talk about Tony's train exchange. And I talk to Eric Fisk all the time. I've got a bunch of his stuff on my railroad, uh, my circuit breakers, for example, that kind of thing. And, and they bill themselves as the DCC professionals. And let me tell you, these guys are professionals. OK, they do installations at the show, not while you wait. You, you know, you need a couple of minutes, but you could come back and get it there while you're at the show. They know everything. They're not, you know, well, yeah, they are the experts. So I got to say, they really uh, uh, know what they're doing. Years ago, we used to run into radio interference with our belt lines layout in their test track when they were doing radio stuff. So we'd, we'd actually share uh, when we could play. Uh, so we wouldn't interfere. But the frequencies on, on radios now have gotten so much better that we're not having that interference anymore. So very interesting stuff. Okay. So where are Tony's 
train exchange uh, located and the guys located, they're in the Better Living Center on the east wall. So when you walk in at door seven, the main entrance where the show office is, circle around counterclockwise on the outer uh, area, uh, uh, staying against the wall, and you'll see them on the right in section 50. So just past soundtracks, then you have um, uh, Tony's train exchange. So if you're looking to bring and have an install done at the show, bring it and they'll do it. If you just bring in the locomotive, they'll even suggest which one goes in it, all that kind of cool stuff. So keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about what I think is funny. I, you know, as, as many years as I've been doing this, 20 plus years I've been, I've been the show director, I, there's always a couple of exhibitors that just surprise the heck out of me. Bethlehem Car Works and John Green is one of those. Uh, if you look at some of their ads, they always surprise me. So these guys do beautiful passenger cars. And, and to get an idea, check out their ads. And you'll see uh, they've got a Boston, a main passenger car, but they do incredible work. And when somebody kind of centers themselves on passenger cars, you can imagine how much better they are. So interesting stuff. So Bethel, Bethlehem Car Works. And I didn't know them until maybe 10 or so years ago. I, there were so many people in the show. I, I've made it a point to try to, in, to meet as many people as I can. These guys surprised me. I said, oh my gosh, this stuff is beautiful. So check it out. And they are located also in the Better Living Center. They're in section 59 and they've been there for a long time. They're, uh, at, they're at tables B, C, and D. So if we go to the map of the Better Living Center, tables uh, B, C, and D of section 59 are, that, are, are where they are located. So you'll be able to check them out, okay? We're gonna keep going. So let's immediately go to whoever is up next and that is CMR Products. Not to be confused with custom model railroads. Custom model railroads are right on Main Street on the left and they build those giant city buildings and they actually do professional built layouts. But CMR Products, is who I'm talking about. And they are against the wall and the Better Living Center. We'll go to that in a second. But this is CMR Products brought to you by Sasha Young. And really, their tagline is make it your own and set the scene. And they do really cool detail work. Okay. They have a thing called Easy Streets. They do decals. They do decal parts. Or I'm sorry, detail parts. You got to check them out. Check out their ads. Go and visit them. These folks are in the Better Living Center, tables 19, and they are in tables L through Q. So L, I got to think about the alphabet, L, M, N, O, P, Q, lots of tables because they have so much stuff. It actually is a six table section set up like a U because they have that many detail parts. And check out, especially their easy streets. It makes it really easy to install streets on a, on a railroad, okay? so. Next up is Tangent Scale Models and David Lilbach, okay? I call these guys the C&C guys, okay? They do cars and cabooses. They're out of Asheville, North Carolina, Kathy. And their, their website is tangentscalemodels.com. And, and go look at their site. That's why I mentioned their site. Actually, when you see the ads, all of these ads have their websites listed. But I pointed this one out because they have a tagline for this time of the year. It's called Naughty or Nice, We Got You. So no matter if you're naughty or nice, they've got some stuff that you could see. So check them out. Now, they're located in the Young Building. All right. And they're in Section 81. And, and that's when you walk in the west with the Stroh building uh, right at your back. You walk in and there's section 80 right there to your right and then 81 right after that. So they're right there. And they've got five tables there. Tangent Scale Models has some great cars and cabooses. Guys, go to their website, tangentscalemodels.com and see for yourself. It's really cool. Now, next up is one of the true hobby stores that I, I love talking with. And I've got a little story that uh, goes with Star Hobby and Dan Vega, okay? I just saw Dan last week. He was at the Marlboro Hub Show in uh, Marlboro, Mass., a, a nice show that I love going to. And he needed an ad. He needed an ad for this, 
he needed to add for the actual uh, insert in uh, Craftsman, and he didn't know what to do. So what he did was call his granddaughter, who's a senior in, in college. I end up talking to her, and, and he gave her a half a day notice to put together an ad. And go check out the ad. It's really good. Also, go see them at starhobby1.com. They've got gift ideas. He really has tailored the website for this time of the year. But his granddaughter was a hoot. She's a, a, uh, an RA in a dorm. She had a couple of meetings. I get the ad. I, I didn't see it until 6 a.m. when I'm usually down there checking email. I got the ad at 12.45 a.m. So after all that she did, she got it to me on time. I said, I just need it for when I wake up in the morning. And there it was. And, 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 and she had no problem with it. And, and, and it looks great. So, so kudos to uh, Dan, to your uh, granddaughter. She did a great job. Okay. Now, they're located in the Mallory section, uh, uh, in the Mallory building, section 137. That's Mallory South, guys. So what you do is you go in Mallory. You know, Athers on your right, North Coast uh, on the left, North Coast on your right, uh, the, the Dry Hill Gang uh, Railroad, Model Railroad, the big giant Model Railroad to your right. Walk down the hallway. You'll get into the large 130,000 square foot area of the building. Go to your left and you'll see um, uh, Star Hobby. And he is one of the true hobby stores and carries all kinds of scales, all kinds of stuff. So it's really cool. Okay, so Mallory section 137, the entire section, it's like 10 or 12 tables. I don't know. He's got so much stuff. That's cool. And it was good to see him at the, uh, the show just this past Saturday as well. So let's go check out a video. We're going to go see. And, and you know, what's funny is every time I look at the website, I, I see the words and it's signal logic and, and it's brought to us by uh, Kevin Rudko. But I look at it and I see sign a logic. You know, just because your eyes go a certain way, but it's signal logic and boy, these signals and, and their tagline is, by the way, signals should work as good as they look. And this is great stuff, easy to use. You got to talk to Kevin. He really does a nice job. He's got about a five minute video. Let's go check it out. Uh, take it away. Let's go see that video and then we'll go and show you where they're located when we come back. Let's hit it. I'm Kevin Rudko and welcome to Signalogic Systems. Like most of you, we are ready to get back to shows, see old friends, and see what is new in the hobby. We have been busy over the last couple of years getting ready for what will be our third year at the 2022 Amherst Railway Hobby Show. We will be showing all of our existing products, including crossing control, switch control, train detection, but most importantly, we want to show you our signaling system. Over the last couple of years, we've spent a lot of time and really progressed this product, and this is what we really want to highlight for you today. Our signal system harnesses the logical methods used by prototype railroads. Our knowledge of actual signal systems designs has enabled us to produce a model railroad product line that is most prototypical. We also know that many model railroaders would love the intricacies of a prototype signal system, but lack the skill or interest to design one using the complexities of existing solutions. The result is our Digital Bungalow Module, or DBM, named after the enclosures housing signal equipment at the wayside. The DBM knows everything needed to perform signaling just like a typical bungalow does with no computer required. All of this is possible with our Signal Suite software. Let's take a quick look at this process. Just like the real world, in Signal Suite you build your signal system as a series of locations. Signal Suite allows you to name each of these locations and once named you can go in, define the type of location and then start populating the location with all the elements that would make up that mainline location.
Once all your locations are defined, you can link them all with blocks. Once your main line is defined, you can add the hardware that's going to create your signal system. You can add DBMs, and once added, you can add the locations that you've defined to those DBMs. Once that's done, you can then populate the different slots that a DBM has with different types of I.O. cards, like ones for switches, ones for block detection, and the most populous ones usually for signals. Once those modules are all defined, you can actually start taking all the I.O. and start assigning them to the different cards. Once all configurations are done, Signal Suite can also become a very powerful dispatch center for CTC. With Christmas and New Year's coming, the weeks before the show are going to fly by and we'll see you there soon. If you can come to the show, please come by and say hello and ask for a demo of Signal Suite. You can find us in the Young Building, one of the middle uh, buildings of the entire show. Uh, at section 86, tables G and H, right near the doors leading to the Mallory building. Hope you can get there and see you soon. Hey, next up, we're gonna take a look at railroad circuits, RR circuits and Dick Bronson. Now he is in the Stroh building and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second, but they are huge on JMRI and LCC interfacing. All right, so you need to check them out. And they are right next to the JMRI table. So we have uh, all kinds of people that are experts in JMRI. And one of the top guys, one of the original authors, Ken, is at the JMR table. And they're together because they, well, number one, they know each other. But Dick does everything with an interface uh, to JMRI and LCC. Uh, so keep that in mind when you go and see them. Now, where are they? They are actually located in Stro, and I got a little story to tell you about Stro. Uh, they're in section 113, tables C and D, and, and you'll see the JMRI is here sign, uh, and you'll find railroad uh, circuits right next to them. Um, here's the story. News alert. The, the Stro building has been renumbered because we lost one whole wall to the storage. So when I published the... Uh, location of everybody, the numbers started instead of at 101, they started at 103, I think. So I had a call from a guy call me because, John, I've been in 105 for 20 years and now I'm in 107. And I said, I didn't move you. I said, I just had to renumber them, like I said in my email, because of the storage facility. He goes, oh, I'm in the same location. I said, yeah, it's just a different number. I said, you got you to gotta watch that. Now, he didn't run ads or anything uh, that I couldn't update and take care of, but it was funny that uh, we did that. So I had to let everybody in the Stro building know, and there's like 40 vendors and in, in, in exhibitors in there uh, that we renumbered. So don't panic, look at the map, and you'll be able to see that you're in the exact same place you've always been in. So it was kind of silly, but uh, a big sigh of relief from, uh, from those guys. So, hey, one of my favorite places, we were there when we did the Virtual Railroad Hobby Show. Let's go to Skykomish, Washington and see what's going on. So let's go with a, a Virtual Rail Fan camera there and see what's going on. Take it away.
Hey, we're back. And before I go another step further, um, I understand that the uh, New England ETE guys, the European train enthusiasts are in the chat room and watching. So just a shout out, guys. Hey, and I'll see you in a couple months, Paul. I'll especially look forward to seeing you. So uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Hey, let's head over to a new vendor in the show, guys. A new exhibitor, first time ever, kind of Wingo Models. And that's Chris Kors. And he's the producer of Craftsman Kits. It's his first time ever. And he's got some really cool uh, laser cut kits. So you got to check these out. He's actually in the Craftsman Kit area. Um, and, and what I mean by that is there there's just seems to be a bunch of laser cut guys that wanted to kind of huddle together in one area. And so we're calling that the Craftsman Kit area. Uh, not everybody is there, but and we'll talk more about that in a second. But check out um, uh, this kind of Wingo models. They have a video, guys. So for the first time, they're going to be in the show. Let's go see what that video has to say. So take it away. Hi, I'm Chris Kors, owner of Conowingo Models. Thanks for watching. At Conowingo Models, we produce wood craftsman kits for your model railroad in both HO and O scales. Our website is conowingomodels.com. We'll take a few minutes to introduce you to our product lines. First is our HO scale legacy line. We offer a set of background flats, which includes four residential houses and one manufacturing facility in one kit. Also featured here are several small buildings that will fit just about anywhere with a modest price tag. Quantities of these kits are limited. If you would like to purchase any of them, please do so on our website and we'll bring them to the show for you. Conowingo Models also features several unique buildings. Crunch Bridge will challenge your weathering skills. Made entirely of wood, this pedestrian covered bridge has long been neglected. A recent addition to the premium kits line is St. Mary's Gate Lighthouse. Mary's is based on the Grand Island East Channel Lighthouse in Michigan. Ah, the smokehouse. Don't let your railroad workers starve. Take care of them by providing them with smoked meats. Whidbey's Mill is a John Allen tribute kit. Using modern techniques, we provide you with a faithful yet modern kit based on the mill John had on his layout. Whispering Chapel is a tiny yet charming rendition of a real church in Slovenia. Concrete sidewalks, walkways, and driveways features two sheets of walking space for your model railroad people. The Gray Street Company House is a very popular yet versatile kit that can go in just about any town. To round out our review of HO scale structures, we bring you the Pensbury Hydroelectric Mill. This unique structure was designed using architectural drawings from the real mill's restoration. It has a very interesting place in history. We've also been dabbling in O scale. Both the Gray Street House and Smoke House are upscaled versions of their HO scale counterparts. By the show, we are hoping to have a foundation and porch on the Gray Street House. Molly's Trolley Shelter is available for the traction folks, but could easily serve as a small flag stop. It may also see some changes. One of Conowingo Model's most popular product lines is a very versatile line of rolling stock in HO scale. Featuring the 24 and 36 foot models, there have been several outgrowths of each with more on the way. While there is no specific prototype for these kits, they are somewhat based on prototypes. All kits begin with a flat car body. This creates a wood plank floor, adding a simple but incredible level of realism. After which, we will build the box car or whatever version on top of it. These kits are designed to be easy to build and only require three tools plus paint and glue. All kits come with fictional Conowingo Railroad decals. Additionally, all kits can be purchased with or without trucks and KD couplers. A caboose lighting kit option features KD couplers and trucks, as well as working Tomar Industries ad like markers and an LED for interior lighting. A bridge rectifier is also included and power is provided through the trucks. 
At Conowingo Models, there's always something cooking in the workshop. There's no telling what we could put out next, so be sure to stop into the website or Facebook page often for updates. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. Welcome back all, and we hope you enjoyed that video from our new, and uh, actually not the newest because we had a first timer join afterwards, uh, but one of our first timers in the show. So I look forward to seeing his product in, in person. So thanks Chris for joining us. Uh, next up is Conway Scenic Railroad. And this is brought to you by Brian Solomon, Dave Swirk. And, th and th I've got a good story years ago, there was a, uh, I forget what, it might've been 1979. I, I seem to remember the badge. They had a regional convention up there and there was a heck of a snowstorm, but we made it. And the next year I was standing in my, in my vest. We went over to the station. You know, they've got that 1847 station that we've all modeled and, and, and few folks have done castings and models of that. But it reminds me of going back in time. And, and, and when I was walking around, it was right about when Somewhere in Time, remember the movie Somewhere in Time? It was with uh, Jane Seymour and Christopher Reeves. You know, he went back in time, fell in love with this woman and needed to get back to her and finally did. And it had a great movie score. It was a, it was a, a lot of Rachmaninoff stuff and, and really nice music, fun. But when you're walking around up there, I felt like I was back in time. It was really cool. So we go over to the turntable. They're spinning the engine around. That's going to take us on an excursion. And all of a sudden it does its whatever it does. I'm not good at that, but it does the, you know, the steam goes flying. Everybody scatters. And I go, what? And I didn't realize it was an oil fire. And so what happened, there was little droplets of oil and covered me, <coughs> excuse me. And, and so I went running in, what happened? What happened? And they actually said, uh, it'll wash out. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're located in the BLC uh, 31. I'm going to grab some water. Please forgive me. And they've been around for a number of years, guys. So if you get the chance to head up to Conway, it's just beautiful, especially if you go in the fall. Oh, my God. And when they go up through Crawford Notch and all of that is just gorgeous. And there's, uh, there used to be a hobby store. I don't know if the hobby store is still there, uh, but there's all kinds of gift shops and, and really a nice little uh, place to visit. So you got to uh, check it out. And um, again, they're in the Better Living Center, but they moved. They wanted to be next to a couple of friends and we were able to accommodate that. So they're in the Better Living section, uh, a better... <laughs> I'll get it straight before the night is up. The Better Living Center building, the BLC Section 31, and they're in tables A, B, and C. So they have moved, but not that far. So check them out and, uh, and you'll, you'll see what's going on. Now, let's talk about resourced ED at the end, Rails and Matt Dowd. I've talked to Matt a thousand times. He's been in our virtual shows, but has never been to the live show. He's coming this time for the first time. And he's just been a great supporter of us. It'll be his first in-person show. So what's he do? Well, he buys, sells, trades, and collections, and brass, and what have you. But he has great deals. He updates his website every single day. I called him with a collection, showed him some pictures. He gave me some solid prices, told me what it was worth. It really helped me out. I got that back like 48 hours later. So he'll be at the show and I look forward to seeing him in person because we've talked a million times uh, over the phone, emails back and forth. And he's really out of the Chicago area, but he's really doing a great job in trying to help people uh, by buying and selling, uh, that kind of thing. So he is going to be in the Better Living Center He's in section 56, and he's tables H and I. So keep that in mind, and we'll check out where he uh, will be. Um, uh, I think you should be able to see that on the map as we speak, and um, let's keep moving. So 
we've got a magazine that comes to the show. And the name of this magazine is Cow Catcher Magazine. And he's been to the show in the form of sending magazines. And check this out. There's one of the most recent magazines, okay? And what I love about Tim Blackwell, the publisher of the magazine, um, he's looking to expand. He wants more. He's currently in the South, the Midwest. And what I love about his magazine is it's, it's, it's got a hometown flair. It's really easy to read, but it's got a national quality to it. And in that is everything that's going on as far as shows in his his uh, subscription area and he's looking to expand it. And that's why he's coming to the show. And we advertise in that show in his magazine, I'm sorry. And it really does make a difference. So Tim, thanks. And, and I look forward to seeing you uh, rather than you just shipping up magazines. Uh, although I am a, a, a person uh, who gets the magazine and I look forward to them every uh, other month. They're out uh, every other month. And uh, there's a lot of great material in them. So uh, a, a, good, a good group. Um, and they are located in the Better Living Center. Uh, his first time here, as we're putting him in the Better Living Center, he's in section 64. He only needs one table to show off what he's capable of doing. And he'll be at table L, as in Larry. So 64 L, BLC, Cow Catcher Magazine. I can't wait. I, honestly, I've never met him but we talk on the phone all the time. He's interviewed me a couple of times. He did stories when we first found out we had to cancel during the COVID. And uh, so I, I feel like he's a friend already. I haven't even seen him. So I really look forward to that. So Tim, looking forward to it. Now, earlier in the show, you heard Ray Buteau talk about RCS of New England. And that RCS, by the way, stands for Remote Control Systems. I call Don Sweet the battery man. And, and that's because he has stuff run across the table. I'm not on track. And teasing him when he got here to set up earlier today, they had a bunch of track, that G-scale track that was plastic. I go, how's that thing run with, with, on, on plastic track? And they, they looked at me and then saw right away I was being an idiot. <laughs> but, but it was funny. But it'll run right across the table, actually. Uh, uh, think of that. No electrical wiring. Oh, my God. I, I committed that when we start our garden railroad outside, battery all the way. I'm not having wiring running out there. Battery all the way. And they run for a good obsession. So they, especially that size, you can have a big battery. And, and, and you know what? Go to a water tower, which acts as a recharge station, and do the real thing, right? So that'll be kind of fun. Uh, when we op on our garden railroad. So um, let's go see what Don Sweet has to say. It's a very short video, um, but uh, he, I, I need to also tell you that he spoke at one of our monthly meetings uh, and the battery man just wowed the crowd. And, and you saw Ray using some of the controls. Uh, and, and did you hear how loud that whistle and that uh, a bell were, oh my gosh, I love it. The louder, the better. So uh, it was cool. So we've got a very quick video and, and we'll be right back in uh, probably a minute. So let's roll that video, guys. Hi, this is Don Sweet from RCS of New England. And we're gonna be at the Railroad Hobby Show uh, this year. And we'd like, invite you to come by our booth and learn all about adding battery radio control systems to your engines. We'll be demonstrating the RealPro system, uh, which is a revolutionary new product. Uh, also, I'll be giving two seminars on Saturday and Sunday at 1030 in the Young Building in the Quiet Meeting Room. So please stop by our booth. We are in section 83 and tables uh, K, L, and M. And we hope to get a chance to meet you and uh, I'll show you some new and exciting ways to operate your trains. And we can do this from HO scale all the way up to G scale. Look forward to meeting you. See you at the show. Hey, let's do this. 
Let's head over to Fort Madison, Iowa for a quick look at a virtual rail fan camera there and let's see what's going on. Let's head on over guys. Hey everybody, let's talk Jacksonville Terminal Company with Stan Brooks. Stan is a wonderful guy. And, and I, Stan, forgive me uh, for, for talking a little bit personal, but uh, he mentioned he had kids. And I said, well, gee, how old are your kids? And he started rattling off numbers. And I don't know how many kids he has. I think it was like seven, but uh, it just it just made me laugh like crazy. So uh, he's got a wonderful family in, in all seriousness. And it, and it was fun to talk to him about that. Um, so let's talk about what Stan and Jacksonville Terminal Company does, guys. He, he's, he's an N-scale guru, okay? He's been marketing new and prototypical containers monthly for a while now, for the last several years. He has a new line that he just released not too long ago called his Visionary Series. Uh, but he is the guru of containers for that scale. And he's got new tooling coming out. He's got all kinds of stuff. He's expanding. He's doing really well, which I love hearing. He's doing a lot of advertising with us, which I think is great. You'll be able to see it in our insert. You're probably looking at a couple of their pages now. 
Uh, and one of the things I want you to check out is they have a, an end scale reefer project and accessories that's due to come out. Uh, and it just really kills me to see the detail on this stuff. It's really amazing. So they're, they're, they're able to come out with stuff. Now they won't take pre-orders because he just doesn't want to have people wait around for stuff. So once that's out, okay, no wishful thoughts in your, you know, coming out later. He's in tune with the market. He really wants to do exactly what he says he's going to do. He's got some new 53 foot containers coming out in his December release. That's now. So watch for these things, guys. If you're end scale, this is amazing. His detail has been so incredible that people have been bugging the heck out of him to do stuff at HO scale. So yeah, he's coming out in HO product with HO products. So look for that in 2022. I can't wait to see because the detail in end scale is like I've never seen. Can you imagine where it'll be in larger scale? So look for them at participating dealers. He is a manufacturer and you can come and visit him. But listen, you could go to his website, jtcmodeltrains.com. He's got a monthly newsletter. He encourages you to sign up so you see what's coming out, when it's going to be released and that kind of thing. So where are they? Well, Jacksonville Terminal Company, guys, is in the Young Building, Section 76. When you walk in that north door, which is the one connected by tent to the Better Living Center, with just the break for the fire lanes, of course. When you walk in that door, 76, the entire section right in front of you. So as you walk in, I can actually picture it. Just a little, little skew at you, like your, maybe your one o'clock, and he's right there. And you got to see his product line. It is tremendous. So thanks for that, Stan. And I look forward to seeing you and talking more about your family and how well they're doing and all that good stuff. See you in a couple of months. Okay. Next up. Guys, another one of those, remember earlier in the show I was talking about some of these folks surprised the heck out of me? Well, Cripple Bush with Gardner Cross does just that. He's been coming forever. And he has a background. I, I, what I love about a lot of new products, it's generated out of necessity, right? So he's been in, 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 his, in his life uh, in geology, petroleum, and, 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 and uh, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And, and he's got a great tagline because of it. His tagline is, is great looking rocks in under a million years. <laughs> so you don't have to wait for them to develop naturally. You could actually just buy them from them. But here's the thing, they're made of rubber. And you go, what? And I just couldn't believe it until I saw it. And they're rubber rocks. They go around corners. They have flexibility. It's like, whoa. If you bump them, if you're near the edge of the layout where I have one, it just kind of boink and springs back in. Did you get that? Boink and springs back in. All right. So it's very cool stuff. Now, they have a website. And I, I point it out because it's cripplebush.net. So you got to try them at cripplebush.net, not .com, because it'll come up with a 404 error code or whatever it is, but cripplebush.net and see this incredible product. And he's got shale and, and riverbeds. And oh my God, his riverbed is like, what? It looks like a riverbed. And maybe he cast it from a riverbed. I don't know. But it's very realistic stuff. And, it, and it's easy to color and, and, and it's just cool stuff. And you can find them in the Young Building, section 72 and tables A through E. So A, B, C, D, E, five tables. And he's got that much stuff, just wonderful stuff. So Gardner, uh, thanks. And, and it's just a cool product. I love it. Now, some sad news, guys. Crusader Rail Services. Crusader Rail, <laughs> easy for me to say. Crusader Rail Services. Ray Kaminsky. I've known him forever. He goes to the prototype meet. I'm doing the white elephant table right next to him. So I've been next to him at various shows on and off for a long time. It's his last show. He's going to retire after 25 years. He's Philadelphia-based, but it's like have show store, will travel, or have a hobby store, will travel, sorry. 
but he's got everything. And I've been with him so, so many places. You know, when I think of Have Hobby Store, Will Travel, I think of the movie. Remember, remember the series Paladin that was on? And, and this is just me being stupid. But he used to present this card. And it was a card. And it was half have gun will travel. And then at the bottom, it said wire paladin. Well, I was like seven when that series was out. I thought for like 10 years, his first name was wire. And it really meant just, you know, telegraph wire him. So I said, that is the dumbest first name, dad. And he goes, and my father said, that's not his first name. <laughs> so silly this. But anyways, it made me think of it when, when I think of Ray at his mobile hobby store and him traveling around. This is going to be his last show. And in my notes, I have a little sad face there. So he's been in 25 years. He's closing out in Amherst. Go and see him because you know he's going to have, he already does have product at a discount, but he'll have even more. So where is he located? He's located in the Stroh building. Uh, and his number, I don't think changed, section 116, and it's the entire west end. So it looks like, a. if you look at the map, it looks like a giant letter C, an extended letter C, because he's got like five tables. And he's got a little clerk area. It looks like you're buying a ticket to a railroad station. Uh, but he's got some great deals, and, and I'm sure they're going to be even more so uh, this time. So check him out. Stroh building, section 116, the entire west section. So you know who he's next to? He's, he's next to railroad circuits and JMRI. Can't miss them. They're all right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And those folks are right next to uh, the um, central New York layout, which is a beautiful layout. So a little shout out to the guys in central New York. Now, right next to Ray is Grisbosky's train store. Okay. And that's Joe Grzboski. And it's one of the best selections of O scale trains at our show. It's huge. He takes up the whole backside of the Stroh building and we'll go there in a second, but he's got a storefront too. It's in Musick PA. And you're thinking where, and honestly, it's right near the Wilkes-Barre uh, airport. So uh, Scranton Wilkes-Barre airport right there. And, and, and he's got a, a big store. So if you're in that area, go see him there. But he brings a huge inventory to the train show. So big shout out to Joe and Joe uh, uh, and, and, and the fact that they've been at our show. Oh, God, since the early days, guys. So uh, it's great to see him there year after year. So where are they? Well, if we go to the map of the Stroh building, they're in section 119. So you know where he is? Uh, you know the Hollimore, uh booths where they actually house the uh, the big horses for the uh, uh, the Big E show. That's where he is. He's right in front of those, and he takes up the entire area and then some. So check him out in section one nineteen, the entire section, and and uh, he's got some hard to find O scale equipment. I can remember one year in one of our commercials. Uh, he held up a pair of an AB uh, set unit of, uh, I forget what they were, but it was an old New Haven AB set that were worth a fortune. So he's got some great stuff, hard to find stuff. Uh, and it, it was, it's, it's fun to see him there every year. So we're still in the Stroh building. Let's go talk about Denny Gelsma and Gelsma Graphics, it's the premier guy who sells railroad shirts, graphics, clubs, embroidery, authentic railroad jackets. And you know, this is another one of these stories. He's been coming to the show for as long as I can remember. And all of a sudden he's on uh, the web and he's got railroad pictures of his railroad and videos on Facebook. And I'm thinking, holy cow, Denny, that railroad looks beautiful. And he is involved in a club and everything. So who knew he did that with that kind of quality? Uh, it doesn't surprise me compared to the quality uh, of, of his products when he comes to the show. He's expanding his space this year. So you've got to go see him. If you've got a road name that you want, he'll have it. Okay. So he's been there forever. And when you walk in the Stroh building, there, there are two entrances to the Stroh building. There's one in the northwest corner that nobody uses because that's away from the rest of the show. It is a, it is a, a valid entrance and exit, though. But the, the big entrance is the east ex, uh, entrance, which is right adjacent to the Young building. 
If you're there, he's in section 111. So you walk in the building, you know, they check your bracelet and look to the left, Denny, Jelzma. So he's right there, okay? And he'll be there in, in, in a little bit bigger fashion uh, again uh, this year. So very cool. Next up, KR Models. And you, you think KR Models until I found out the CEO and, and founder of the company was Keith. And I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Keith Ravel. And I, I look at it and pronounce it like that because it was spelled just like the, remember the old Ravel models when we were growing up? Oh my God, I love those kits. And they had the, the, this, this display layout. So, sorry, sorry, Keith. But they Ravel had this display layout and I used to try to put them all together to see what the display that layout looked like. Anyways, when I see Keith Ravel, that's what I think of. But Keith, guys, is out of the UK and Canada. It's going to be his first time at the show. And he's bringing something to the show that's going to just wow everybody. And, and um, he's got a kind of like a tagline, not necessarily a tagline, but he aims to bring never been produced models or long since gone models back to life. I love that. See, because I don't do modern. So he's got stuff that might be of interest to me and watch for their HO scale 50 ton two truck Shea locomotive. That's his debut at the show. I can't wait to see that. And you can get it in three different configurations as far as sound, DCC, not DCC, all that kind of stuff. So he's coming and they're based in the UK and Canada. So I look forward to uh, the fact that he's coming. I, I got to say, our show is becoming more and more international, a little bit of international flair, not at a, you know, a lot at a time, but we hope to get Rocco and Fleischman at the show this year. We've already got Hattons uh, coming to the show, the largest distributors in, uh, of product in the UK. And we've got Deluxe Materials and we've got Molico from Australia. Can't come this year because Australia is still locked down. But we've got a nice international flair. And I can't tell you how many Canadian friends are usually at the show, guys. It's very difficult for them to cross the border. But Keith, is gonna be here. Nice, Keith. So watch for their HO scale 50 ton two truck Shea. And they're gonna make their debut guys in the Better Living Center. So he's got a great spot in the Better Living Center sections, section 23 tables D, E and F. So if you head up, <laughs> this is funny, my notes. If you wanna know where he is, you head directly up Main Street. And as soon as you pass the Cucina Italia, which is the Italian kitchen, which is also Steve Magnani and the Hobby Gallery, all they do in the center is cook the greatest Italian food you've ever had. So he should open a restaurant. But as soon as you pass the Italian Cucina, kitchen, Cucina, uh, you'll find the uh, uh, table section 23, tables D, E, and F. So it's a little U-shaped section. That's where Keith is going to be showing off. Uh, his, his new product and his big debut to the show. Keith, I can't wait to meet you in person. We've talked on the phone, we've emailed. It'll be a wonderful thing. So I am so happy you're in the show this year. So thank you. Okay. Next guys, we're gonna head over to the Nassau Hobby Center and Chris Hirschberg. So Nassau Hobby Center, this is only his second live appearance. Appearance. He was new in 2020. He wanted to come back in 2021. We had to cancel, but he's coming back this year. This hobby store has been in business for 75 years. This is a true hobby store. Something I love to see. Hobby stores are disappearing, guys. It makes me crazy. I love going to hobby stores and seeing what they have for collections, all that kind of stuff. So he'll be here. True hobby store with all kinds of stuff. Trains, I'm glad he's back. And we'll find him in uh, Mallory North. So uh, uh, Chris and the Nassau Hobby Center will be in the north section of, of uh, Mallory. Remember, that's the northern section of the building, Ather, North Coast, et cetera. Uh, he's going to be in sections 124, tables A through F. So let's think about that. A, B, C, D, E, F. So that's, whoa, a lot of tables. All right, and he's got a lot of stuff to show. So it'll be a nice, as I call it, a nice spread of trains. There's a whole section, a rectangle. He's got the whole top of that rectangle. So he'll have a lot of great stuff there. So cool. So let's continue. 
Mount Washington Cog Railroad, thecog.com. I love their website. And Rob Airy. Guys, what can you say? Who hasn't been to the Cog Railroad? So it's just really fascinating the way it works, the way it, the way it was, uh, and the way it still is. And, and remember that uh, Cog uh, Railroad locomotive that came to the show? It was called Pepper Sass. And it was one of the actual first, I think they used that locomotive to build the Cog Railroad. And then they had a couple of others to actually uh, run people up and down. Uh, that's being restored. So Pepper Sass is not going to be with us. Uh, but it will. It will be back. And I'm sure we will see it again. Now, the Mount Washington Cog Railroad has decided to team up and be right next to Conway Scenic. So you'll find them in the Better Living Center, Section 31, right next door to Conway Scenic. And they have a booth section in Section 31 C and D. I'm not sure if they're going to bring a booth yet or not, but they've got that space and they can do what they want in that space. So I look forward to seeing them because it really is a great place to visit. And they've got some, uh, you know, when you go there at the right time of the year, you'll get some great scenery and it's fun uh, to sit uh, and, and look at that locomotive that's built on an angle, just so the boiler and the water are, are at the right, uh, uh, the, the right height and all that kind of stuff, right? So, to continue to move, I've got a video for you, but let me say this. I've got a good story about mini prints, and this is Bernard Helen. Uh, he's new on the scene, and, 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 and uh, he, guys, he's actually not coming to the show. He's one of those Canadian exhibitors that is having such a difficult time crossing the border, and I have been harassing him to death to come to the show. So he can't. I, I get it but he wanted to be in this preview and he ran an ad because he doesn't want people to forget about him. And he's got a great video, but let me tell you a story. He does 3D printed details. And when I first heard about Bernie, it was really amazing because this is another business born out of necessity. He needed beavers for a scene on his HO scale layout. Nobody made beavers. He made his own. And then it mushroomed into the fact that he was on our website and in the virtual railroad show. And he had, I couldn't tell you how many orders, but enough orders to almost crash his website. So he's here. He's now got several 3D printers running all day. He's got a great product line. He's going to do a discount show. He's not at the show, but he's got a discount code for the weekend for the show. You know what? Let's go check out his video and then we'll come back and say a couple more words. So let's go to the video on MIDI Prince and Bernard Helen. Take it away. I like modeling. But what I really love is 3D printing mini prints. Hi there, my name is Bernard Helen, and I started mini prints just over a year ago. As a recovering graphic designer, I just bought my first resin 3D printer, and I've been looking for some items that weren't available for my layout. So I offered a few of these 3D printed items up to friends, uh, and then I decided to offer them on Facebook, and the results were amazing, more than I could have ever imagined. Little did I know, a year ago that I would be starting a model railroad company. In the last year, Mini Prince has grown from that first little 3D printed beaver to over a hundred different animals, figures, and objects that are now available in N, HO, S, and O scales. My goal at Mini Prince is simple. It's to offer you craftsman quality, unique, but most importantly, fun printed model railroad details figures and the animals that will make your model railroad layout come alive. I honestly believe it's the little things that matter most on the layout. So I'd like to invite you on a little tour of some of the things that I offer at miniprints.com. Please join me. So what we're doing is we're going to go to miniprints, M-I-N-I-P-R-I-N-T-S dot com. And this is where you make your model railroad layout come alive. So. The Mini Prince website is broken down to a number of categories, and I'd just like to take you through it and show you some of the things that we offer. So the first thing you'll see is 
that we have a number of featured categories. Our birds, animals, people, and oddities. But that's not all that we offer. We also offer land animals, aquatic animals, domestic animals. We talked about the people and the oddities, but there are also objects and vehicles, which we'll go through in a little bit. You'll also see the new arrivals. Also have some featured products that tend to be new arrivals, but not that were posted within the last week. And then of course, uh, some of our best sellers. Our custom crew line of realistic modern railroaders and the bald eagles and Canada geese. So if you go to the bottom of the website here, there are a few categories that I wanted to talk about. All of our N scale items are conveniently listed in one location. So if you are an N scaler and you just want to see all the mini prints that are available in N scale, here's just a huge laundry list of them. So you can see all of the N scale items here. The other things I wanted to mention at the bottom here, uh, I have a painting clinic online uh, that was created for the NMRAX Virtual Model Railroad Convention. So that might be something that people would like to check out. So I just want to sort of conclude here uh, with uh, the fact that we do offer a mini prints of the month club. Uh, a number of people have taken advantage of this and uh, every month I put together a curated box for $25 US. Uh, that includes the shipping and you get a set of animal mini prints, a set of seasonal mini prints and a set of mystery mini prints. And it's always more than three sets of things. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, uh, we do have the mini prints delivered monthly. Uh, and every mini prints of the month club subscriber also gets 15% off uh, at miniprints.com. So those are some of the big areas for the website, the uh, mini prints of the month club, the featured categories where you can shop, uh, our uh, no breakage guarantee. If you're interested in more information, you can of course always add in your email address uh, for our newsletter where we will uh, let you know uh, what is happening in the world of mini prints. And I'm just gonna sign up for my own newsletter here, Bernard at miniprints.com. And then you just enter it. You can chat with us on Messenger if you're on Facebook Messenger, or you can follow us on our social channels at Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Thanks again for joining me, and may all your signals be green. Five and three. Hey, let's go visit McRail and Greg McComas. Now, their tagline is distinctive details that enhance your modeling. And McRailProducts.com, guys, they do small details. Check these guys out. They do end of train devices, racks, and so much more. When he started, he was just doing the end of train devices, and he's got all kinds of stuff now. And, and, and when you go to his website, McRailProducts.com, He's got what's called a, um, I guess, a catalog. If you go to page 11 of the 46-page catalog, Greg, <coughs> excuse me, very wisely has a cover over this hopper. And guess what hopper car it is? It's one of our commemorative cars. So, hello, Greg, thanks. So wild stuff. And that has actually made it into a lot of magazines. And there's the ABLE, you know, our, our, our Beltline's uh, modular commemorative car that we give out every year. It's all over the place. Nice move, Greg. And I haven't forgotten. So check out those very cool details, uh, guys. So, and really page 11 of his 46 uh, page catalog, you will actually see and look for the car that says ABLE is ABLE. Ooh, such a catchy phrase for our, our belt lines. So very cool location. I, I'm sorry, details. And his location is in the Young Building, Section 79. And he's got so many details, he, he can fit them all on one table. So he's in Table N for Nancy, 79N. And as you, as you come in, he's more towards the east side. Um, and you'll see him right there. And I just love his products. You could actually take the little end of train devices out and put them in a little rack that goes right next to the station. It's like, whoa, that's cool.
So it allows us to see that. So let's head on over next to Micro Lumina and Bill Sartori. Now, a couple of things have happened with Bill and Micro Lumina. Guys, he started out lighting things, not so much more now because he's changed his website to railroadkits.com. So Railroad Kits, that used to be right next to him, and Micro Lumina merged together, okay? And Bill now uh, has ownership of all of that. So what we're talking about here are Railroad Kits, a complete line of fine scale miniature castings with, of course, with permission from George Celios and sound modules and lighting. He's got all kinds of things. So it's not Microlumina as his website anymore. It is now railroadkits.com. So head on over there. And he is smack in the middle of the Craftsman Kit area in the Better Living Center. It's section 47A, tables A through F. So he's got a very large section because he's got all that lighting, all that sound, all these Craftsman kits. So head up about halfway to up Main Street, take a right, you can't miss them, they're right there. And there's a lot of carpet in that area too. Uh, uh, so keep that in mind as well. So we're getting down to the end of it guys. And, and I wanna take you to uh, one more site on the uh, virtual rail fan uh, 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 parade of hits. And uh, that site is Rebel Stoke, British Columbia. So let's go see our Canadian friends. Let's go see what's going on up there. By the way, this is hosted by the by the Rebel Stoke Railway Museum. So thank you guys for hosting that. Let's go see what's going on up there.
Hey, we're back from British Columbia. Whew, my arms are tired. Is that one, how that joke goes? Nah. Anyways, next up is Rapido. And, and when I talk Rapido, I think of Bill Schneider. I think of Jason Schron. But now I think of a lot more. Have you ever seen some of their promo videos? Oh, my gosh. They are unbelievable. So we've got a video on file. We'll queue it up in a second. But I, I need to let you know, I've known uh, uh, Bill Schneider. He lives in Connecticut. I'm a Connecticut guy. Um, and and, uh, and Jason, Jay, I've known Jason and Bill for a while now. But they put a particular slant on their videos that are quite different than you might think. And so there is one particular episode that I really want you to see. And then when we come back, we'll show you where they're located. Um, and um, they at one time, if some of you know Jason at all, he restored an old bus and he wanted to bring that bus to the train show. And I said, bring it, bring it right in. We'll park it right inside the Mallory complex, which is where they're located. And then when he found out that it was so much trouble to get it across the border and back and, 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 and he decided not to, but I would have loved to have seen that bus. Anyways, that particular slant on the videos that I'm talking about, you'll be able to see now. So let's go check out episode one of Robin. Take it away. Eleven thirty, twelve. 12, uh, basically whenever I roll out of bed, uh, get in my car, grab a coffee, you know, take my time, put in that full eight hour day, right, from 12 to 5. And uh, yeah, I show up, uh, usually uh, make another coffee when I get here, and uh, then I'll sit down, turn on my computer, uh, you know, do some emails. When I'm answering emails, I usually like to address the customer pleasantly and then proceed to directly tell him no to anything that he really had to ask because it's just easier that way. It's Hey Robin, we're pushing Jason's taxi out and it accidentally went to the train tracks. Dear customer, thank you for your email. No, we cannot service your model because your dog ate it. Fun fact, a dog actually did eat somebody's model once. If you'd like a replacement, please email scale trains. Thank you. And take care. I also talk on the phone a lot with our customers regarding their issues and warranty complaints. Rapido Trains, Robin speaking. No, uh, no, I'm sorry. No, we're not even the same company. What do you mean? It's no, it's not our model. Arnold Rapido is a separate company. What don't you get? Okay, thank you, bye. <sighs> you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do a repair or two, and uh, well, a repair or 10, and uh, they just keep coming and coming and coming, and it never stops. Hey, look, a new repair. Here's the paperwork. Oh, I see they've taped up the box. Ah, original pack kid jing.
So when we are receiving a new repair to do, uh, the customer thinks that his model from 15 years ago is still under warranty. Uh, it's not. And usually the reason it's in is because either his cat or his wife, one or the other, the hair is wrapped around the gear so tightly that it's not, it's not going anywhere. And we don't cover that under warranty. Hair removal is for a barber, not a model train mechanic. So sometimes, uh, you know, when things are really busy around here, I'll help out in the warehouse and stuff. And, uh, you know, the guys back there really need some help. Uh, and they call me in because I'm the best really here. I, I basically save everybody's, everybody's uh, heinies really when things go south. Uh, they call me, I'm the guy. Yeah. Hey Francis, where do you want this? Put it up high. Okay. Sometimes, when things are nice and quiet, I like to get up and go chase away the foamers that are outside our front window trying to look inside. Hey! 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 So I love what I do here. It's so rewarding helping people fix their broken trains. I love my job. Really? I love my job. Yeah. Are we done? Are we done? Many thanks to all of our exhibitors that participated, especially our allied members, Bachman Trains, ScaleTrains.com, Spring Creek. A special thanks has to go out to the folks at Virtual, I beg your pardon, VirtualRailFan.com, Kathy, Mike, Justin in the studio, all the moderators, the camera operators. You guys are the best. I really appreciate it. My crew, Greg Moss, Mike Chapman, Joe Biagioni, uh, the president of the Amherst Railway Society. Thank you guys. And especially the guys in the live studio audience. Thank you guys for the support. I really appreciate it. And uh, our next show, everybody, will be on the 29th and 30th, live and in person, 2022. Stay tuned as we will be back bigger and better than ever. So thanks to everyone for tuning in. And this is John Sacerdote signing off. Stay safe and we'll see you all in less than two months. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.